children i welcome you all to your english class i hope you all are fit and fine for today's english lesson we are going to continue with the second chapter from your honeycomb book the gift of chapels you know that we had already finished the two comprehension checks that are on page number 22 and 28 respectively from your book and also in your in our previous video lesson we had uh, started working with the text we have completed 1 2 3 and 4 question numbers today we will be moving ahead with the rest of the question that follows so without delaying let's get started by writing the answer of 5 6 and 7 first and then we will move to the language part okay so let's get started number 5 five uh, question on getting gopu mama's chappal the music teacher tried not to look too happy why so let's write it down okay number 5 of the working of the text the music master's chappals music master's chappals were old but he lied to lally he lied to lally that they were brand new brand new and costly costly okay gopu mama had hardly used hardly used his new chappals new chappals so the music master so the music master was really happy happy getting them getting them he, he tried to hide his feelings to hide his feelings feelings to show that he was was very upset and his loss okay so this is the fifth answer from page number 29 the music masters chappals okay chappals were old but he lied to lally that they were brand new and costly gopu mama had hardly used his new chappals so the music master was really happy getting them he tried to hide his feelings to show that he was very upset with the children and his loss okay write it down please now we will move to the next question number 6 on getting a gift of chappals the beggar vanished in a minute why was he in such a hurry to leave let's write it down number 6 the beggar
beggar was in hurry to leave to leave because he knew that the children had brought him the chappals the chappals without seeking permission seeking permission from the elders elders he feared that it might be be taken back it might be taken back he needed the slippers very badly as his feet were full of blisters were full of blisters so he quickly quickly vanished okay so here is your answer the beggar was in hurry to leave because he knew that the children had brought him the chappals without seeking permission seeking means without asking for asking for permission from the elders he feared that it might be taken back he needed the slippers very badly as his feet were full of blisters so he quickly vanished okay this is your sixth answer now the last one walking towards the kitchen with mridu and meena rukumani began to laugh what made her laugh okay now let's do that one also a seven rukumani mani was laughing imagining goku mama without his chappals his chappals he was in a habit habit of taking out his shoes and wearing those comfortable chappals chappals as soon as he returned from work returned from work 
Okay. So yes. Now she she laughed wondering wondering about his reaction reaction when he comes to know he comes to know that that she gave her slippers first to the music master music master rukumani was laughing imagining gopu mama without his chappals he was in habit of taking out his shoes and wearing those comfortable chappals as soon as he returned from work she laughed wondering about his reaction when he comes to know that she gave his slippers to the music master okay please write it down now we have finished working with the text for working with the language part you will have to read the three sentences that are on page number 30 marked as a b and c we will be reading those sentences first and then i'll tell you what's on my back so let's get started read the following sentences a if she knows we have a cat party will leave the house b she won't be so upset if she knows about the poor beggar with sores on his feet c if the chappals do fit will you really not mind so if you can notice that each sentence consists of two parts the first part begins with if and it is known as if if clause and the second part which is after the comma that part is called the main clause so these kind of sentences are called conditional sentences for one thing to happen the previous thing has to happen okay so when you present a condition for the result to occur these kind of sentences are called conditional sentences or if clauses or conditional clauses okay so when we read these kind of sentences we have to know certain rules when to apply and how to apply it so we are going to learn that today so with this if you see if is also a conjunction conjunctions are used to link two ideas or link one or more ideas together like and so but similarly if it has also been used to link two ideas now for one thing to happen here the other thing is the result so if clause is the condition that you are presenting this will be your condition this if clause is the condition that must be fulfilled that must happen that must occur for the result to occur that means for the main clause to happen so every conditional sentence is made of two part okay the first one is if clause which is the condition and the second part is the main clause which is the result so you uh, you you might have used these kind of sentences in your daily lives but you might have not noticed it then uh, like you would have said that if it rains today i will not go to the school you placed a condition that if it will rain you will not go to the school similarly i can say if uh, if you visit me today i will uh, i will serve you breakfast so similarly there are many uh, many sentences which we can condition which we can uh, use to uh, to get a probable result so these clauses these if clauses are basically of four types we will be reading those and i'll tell you which you have to uh, you have to study uh, for your 
uh, working with language, which you should know clearly. The first one is type 0. Okay, this type. This one uh, needs, uh, this uh, concept needs a basic understanding of the tense. I hope you know that the tense uh, usually have three parts, present, past and future. For this, you need to know their distinction also. Like present is divided into simple present, then present continuous, present perfect and present uh, present perfect continuous. So similarly, past is divided and future is also divided into certain parts. So let's see how, uh, how is type 0 formed. You will have to use first the word if because it is a if clause. So the word if has to be there. Then you will have to use the simple present tense of the verb. Okay. The verb has to be in simple present. And then the main clause has simple present in it. Now let's uh, see uh, through example. Let's understand it through example. If I get sick, I go to the doctor. This is reality, okay? This is a habit. When you will get sick, then only you will go to the doctor, right? Otherwise, you won't go. So, this type 0 makes you understand that it's a habit, it's a universal truth. When you are sick, you have to go to the doctor. So, if I get sick, I go to the doctor. Whenever I fall sick, I go to the doctor. This is the concept. This is the basic if clause, type 0. Now, second type, that is type 1. This one will use first the if clause, okay? If plus present simple is the if clause. It's the condition. If I get sick, okay? This will be in present. So, you can see that the verb used here is in simple present tense. Get is simple present here. Then you have to, in the main clause, you will have to use will plus infinitive. Now, infinitive verb is not the main verb in a sentence. You should remember this. That infinitive verb, sometimes infinitive words have to and sometimes it's without them. Like to go, to come. These are not acting as main verb, but as the supportive one. It just gives a structural meaning to the sentence. So here also we will see we are going to use the infinitive verb and not the verb actually. So with will you have to use a inf infinite. If you read the sentence, read it like this. If I get sick, I will go to the doctor. In the first type, type 0, we had seen that a universal truth was being said. That uh, this will happen, then this will definitely happen. That's our reality. So, first one is very real, very real condition, means that is possible, that is very much possible, that is reality, that will happen. Now, for type 1, there are chances or there is a possibility, okay, there could be possibility for the thing to happen. That means, if I get, a, a get sick, I will go to the doctor. Right now, I am not sick, but if I get sick, I will go to the doctor, okay. This is type 1. Now, let's move to type 2. If plus past simple and then in the main clause you have would plus infinite. Now this, this thing to occur is, uh, is rarely possible. It's not possible. Okay. Here you see if I got sick I would go to the doctor. This thing has not happened. Is not going to happen in the near future. Okay. Anytime soon because he is, sta uh, he is stating chances. Is saying that I'm not sick, but if I got sick, okay. Here you can see in type two, the thing hasn't happened for the result to occur. If the thing will happen, there is very, uh, very less chance. There is no chance at all. This is very rare case to happen. So then he would go to the law. So would and go is the main clause here. This is the whole main clause, and we have to use would plus. Infinitive. Infinitive without the two. So go is the infinitive verb. Now the third kind is if plus past perfect would plus have plus past participle. So what is past perfect? You have to use had. Okay. In past you have to use had and you have to use be the word been also. So had been sick here. Okay. 
So I, if I had been sick, I would have gone. So have plus past participle of the verb. The past participle of go is gone. That's why the past participle is used here. I would have gone to the doctor. This, there is no chance for this thing to happen. It's impossible for this to happen because the person is not sick and because he is not sick, he is never going to the doctor. So this last case is unreal. It's hypothetical. Okay, it will never occur. It's just a chance like uh, when you move out, okay, when, and it suddenly starts raining. You say, na, if I had known before, I would have not come out. Okay, if I knew that, uh, if I knew that it was going to rain, I, I would not come out. Okay, if I had been knowing, I would have not come out. So these kind of sentences which were never going to happen or which is just a wish that uh, I wish it would, have, it would have happened but it did not and it never will because the time has passed, the time has, uh, the time has crossed. Okay, so this last thing will never happen. Now, the thing that we are going to learn is the type 1 clause. Okay, the type 1, that means this one. You are going to read the sentences in this form only for your chapter, for your basic understanding. I just made, I just made you know, means I just taught you this so that you can know the basic structure. But for your uh, syllabus in your book, you have just the second one. So let's read it and solve the exercises. Okay. Notice that each sentence consists of two parts. The first part begins with if. It is known as if clause. We write each of the following pair of sentences as a single sentence. Use if at the beginning of the, of the sentence. Yes, you should know that the if clause uh, can be used in the front as well at, at, means as the main clause also. Means it can get flipped. You can use the if clause later also and the main clause before also. Here, they have asked you to use the if clause in the beginning. Now, walk fast, you will catch the bus. This, this is the two sentences that has to be combined. Now, we are going to use the word if. There's, there is this example. If you walk fast, you will catch the bus. So, for you to catch the bus, you will have to walk fast. So, this case, you can see, resembles this one. Right? Type 1. If is there. If you walk fast. Walk is a simple, uh, walk is a simple present verb. So, if you walk fast and you can see in the main clause, you will find will plus infinitive. So, you will catch, you will catch the bus. Okay? So, again, number B, don't spit on the road, you will be fined. If you spit on the road, you will be fined. Now for 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5, we are going to write it down in the copy, okay, in your notebook. So I'll be writing it for you. You can, uh, you can note it down. The first answer is... If you tire yourself, if you tire yourself now, now you won't be able to, you won't be able to work. in the evening okay number 2 study regularly you will do well in the examination if you study regularly regularly you will
do not use contractions you will do well in the examination examination so do you see that it's representing the sentence is representing the type one that we had studied earlier study is the simple present and then will do is the will plus infinitive infinitive that we have in the main clause so this part is the if clause and this part the second part is the main clause number three now work hard you will pass the examination in the first division if you work hard work hard you will pass in the first division number 4 now polite to people they will also be polite to you if you if you are polite to people people they will also be polite to you okay number 5 don't tease the dog it will bite you okay if you tease the dog if you tease the dog the dog it will bite you bite you so here are your answers now we will move to the second question fill in the blanks in the following paragraph today is sunday i am what wondering whether i should stay at home or go out if i go out okay so first let me rub the board so if i the first blank in the sentence if i go out the first blank comma i dash miss the lovely sunday lunch at home i will miss i told you type one is according to this only the first sentence rest here then the second one if i dash for lunch i dash miss the sunday film showing at archana theater i stay for lunch the second will be the second sentence will be stay and then again will i will miss the sunday film i think i will go out and see the film only to avoid getting too fat yes here you can see there's a message also that you shouldn't uh, just sit idly and keep on feeding yourself you might get fat okay or you might turn obese or fat now number 3 uh, there's also uh, fill in the blanks only complete each uh, complete each sentence below by appropriately using any one of the following if you want to or if you don't want to or if you want him to now the first one will be don't go to the theater if you don't want to okay the third one number 1 is i'm just writing the answers you will have to write the questions as well so don't go to the theater if you don't want to 
want to. Okay. Number two, he will post your letter. He will post your letter. This dot dot means you have to write a question before this sentence starting. I'm just writing the answer. He will post your letter if you want him to. If you want him to. Okay. Number three. Please use my pen if you want to. If you want to. Number four. He will lend you his umbrella if you want him to. Two. Next is five. My neighbor Ramesh will take you to the doctor if you want to. If you want him to. Okay. Number six. Don't eat it if you don't want it. Want to. If you don't want to. Okay. So. Here are your answers for uh, question 3. That's on page number 31. With this, we are done with the chapter, a gift of chapels. And the speaking and writing part, we will be doing that in our online lessons because that way it will be more productive. I hope you enjoyed the story and you have learned the use of if clause. You will be able to use it effectively in future. On this note, I finished this video lesson here only. Take care of yourself and your family. Bye-bye.